thanking the frontline staff for all their hard work um, in accident emergency departments across the county. Um, we're stopping off at Grantham Hospital, our first port of call, um, and then we're going on to Pilgrim Hospital, Skegness Hospital, Louth Hospital and Lincoln Hospital. We've brought you biscuits to thank you for all your hard work. You guys are obviously frontline staff who are, you know, there for all of us. Um, and we're raising funds for the air ambulance en route um, and we just delivering loads of biscuits. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. wow. Thank you. For you. Oh, my word, that's <laughs> really <laughs> Are they all for us? Yes, they're all. Oh, I don't need more ones. Bang goes your diet. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to buy any biscuits for about two years here. <laughs> <laughs> assuming you get time to have a coffee yeah. break. Oh, yeah. you know, yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> 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 had a couple of experiences in Lincoln Hospital previously to Grantham A&E shutting at night and I knew how understaffed and overrun the A&E was at Lincoln and when I realised that we were then going to have a reduced service um, it scared me um, to be honest I've got three kids I live on my own um, if something happens during the night time I'm stranded with three children um, so it scared the life out of me, which is what made me start to look into why it had been shut down at night. I found that it was all part of a systematic downgrading of hospitals across the country and that it wasn't just a local issue. We started out with the Fighting for Grantham Hospital group, which is the local hospital campaign. And then we realised that Grantham Hospital was actually on a list of 66 hospitals um, earmarked for closure in 2010. We decided to group together with a few other campaign groups from Lewisham, Chorley, uh, Huddersfield, Devon. Devon, there was quite a few campaign groups. Met down in London last October and then sharing stories, you know, we've all been called scaremongers, we've all been told it's a local issue, we've all been told it's a national shortage of doctors, we've all been told the same rubbish. And when you start to realise that actually, oh my God, they said that to us too. Mm. You know then, you know that what you're thinking in the back of your mind and doubting yourself, thinking surely this is crazy, it can't be true, it is, it actually is. When we went down to London in October, there were maybe five or 600 of us outside the Department of Health protesting. By March, after the October, there were 350,000 of us. The groups realised that actually there were like-minded people out in the counties and they worked very hard to get that group bigger and it's growing every day. have been really 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 generous they? and they've oh, donated good. hundreds of packets. Really? That's yeah. fabulous. Isn't it? Um, you've got a bit of a thing of on custard cream. <laughs> <laughs> you've got yeah. more jammy dodgers going to Wayne Fleet. <laughs> You'll have some more jammy dodgers oh, coming. Wow. The intention of all of this is a show of appreciation and thanks for the hard-working frontline staff of each of the five Lincolnshire hospitals. The quantity of biscuits is an expression of our appreciation of all that they do for us. May I also ask you to join me in a minute's silence for the innocent victims of the tragic and cruel events that followed the recent Manchester concert and indeed the horrible events of last evening. Thank you all. The future of this hospital is under threat 
um, as a place of um, acute care for maternity, potentially even A&E. 24-7 um, children's ward is, is under threat. Also the future of acute stroke services here as well. If you're having a baby and, it, and it's anything less than straightforward, you'd have to go all the way to Lincoln. Bed to bed transfer time from here is a minimum of an hour. And as one example, an emergency caesarean needs to be from the decision to the delivery by caesarean within um, 30 minutes. That's just not going to happen. It's about saving lives, getting treatment on time, but also about saving people from and babies and people who have strokes from disabilities. This hospital saved my daughter's life in 2014, and that was a 15-minute delivery, and that's why the little girl who's, who's over there with us today um, is able to walk, talk, etc. She's alive, she's not brain damaged. The future of this A&E building as well, once you take away all the acute services behind it that becomes a shell and you know it won't take the major children's emergencies children for example you know under fives would have to get to Lincoln I'm a nurse I've been a nurse for 28 years and kept quiet about things that I'd seen in terms of um, cutbacks and um, restraints within the NHS. Um, I was diagnosed with cancer, which really was the wake-up call for me because I suddenly thought, actually, my life's now limited and for 20 years I've kept quiet um, and now I need to be speaking out and saying, no, this is not acceptable. The National Health Service, as we know it, a comprehensive, universal healthcare service that is free at the point of delivery based on patient need, doesn't actually exist anymore because the NHS and the reconfigurations that they've done in the NHS over the last couple of years means that they actually are basing our healthcare on ability to afford it mm. rather than patient need. The Health and Social Care Act 2012 immediately took the responsibility from the Health Secretary to provide healthcare to the whole country. That responsibility has now gone to NHS England which then divides that out into hundreds of CCGs, clinical commissioning groups, and they are private. They act as the NHS, they wear the NHS logo, but they're supported by commissioning support units, and commissioning support units are private healthcare companies such as Arden and Gem, Optum. Optum is a sister company of United Health. We have Optum in Grantham, it sits in our council offices. They actually manage all of our CCGs back office work opened up the market to any provider bidder as opposed to NHS always being priority. Um, so now they just have the, the free will to sell it off to whoever they want to, basically. The Sustainability and Transformation Plan split up the country into 44 regions that can just be sold off to private contracts very easily. There's a report that was done on the NHS, uh, the Naylor report, which set out what was needed, mm. and we're backing the proposals in so the much? Naylor report. The Naylor report is basically about estates planning and assets. Any assets that a hospital trust has, um, if they don't sell them, then they get underfunded um, on stuff like bed sheets and uh, like syringes and supplies, basically. So they're being forced into selling their assets. And they've also brought in the NHS property services. That's part and parcel of the Naylor report where they can actually sell off the land. They gave it across to NHS property services. They just gave it to them. You know, that's publicly funded buildings. It's a bit like my cancer. I know I've got cancer. Eventually I got the diagnosis. You've got cancer. I know I have. I've been trying to tell you I've got cancer. I knew something was wrong with my body. I know something's been wrong with the NHS for 28 years, you know. <laughs> but I knew there was something wrong with me. Now I want the cancer cutting out. They've done that. Now it needs cutting out the NHS. We understand from the SCP document, which is very confusing, it is suggesting on one page of the document that we're going to get improved services at some stage of this community hospital, which everybody obviously agrees is a wonderful idea. But then on, on the next page, it does say that this hospital could close along with Louth Hospital and a new hospital somewhere at a location unknown to us. When you think about the population, of Skegness, 
and especially into holiday periods like we're going into now. The population uh, comes from anything from 280,000 to 320,000 people. So can we afford to actually lose Skegness Hospital? The answer to that is definitely no. We will be left with a very basic, unaccessible NHS. People who can't afford to go private will be left to suffer. We've seen the underfunding of um, council-run care homes to the point where they've been actually closed and the big corporate guys have come in um, and taken over that part of the market. The people that I look after who are end-of-life elderly residents, they've paid into this system all of their lives. You know, They are losing their houses, they are having to fund their care through selling their properties now. That's going to get worse. Down in Dorset there is a GP surgery that is charging, I think it's £49 for a 10 minute appointment, um, £145 for a 30 minute appointment. Now that's before you've received any treatment, any diagnosis. Mm. That's just purely for your appointment. Now Virgin Healthcare take over GP practices already. They've actually taken over community health services in Manchester, which is all out of hospital services. GPs are now being paid to reduce the amount of prescriptions that are being prescribed. So it's like but, a sales job, you yeah. get incentivised. And to me, I'm sitting here saying, but those doctors haven't prescribed those drugs willy-nilly in the first place, surely it's because the patient needs them, or the patient's condition needs them. You know, it, it's morally wrong, and the doctors know that, and the nurses know that, and the system knows that. They're actually restricting drugs now. Um, certain cancer pain drugs and certain um, chronic pain drugs have now been stopped completely on the NHS, you can't get them anymore. To sit me down and say you were lucky to have your cancer when you had it um, because you are now afforded you know, every operation you need, anybody coming into the system now apparently is only get, going to get two operations to remove that cancer on the NHS and anything above and beyond that will be actually paid for privately because it's seen as cosmetic. That's wrong, that is so wrong, that is not, you know, and the surgeons themselves are saying we know this is wrong. We are fighting this, we are trying to fight our corner. We're trying to do um, two for one operations, which is pretty much what I had. Um, I was um, breast cancer, bilateral mastectomy, both breast tissue removed and reconstructed all at the same time. And now I look back and think, oh, I was a bit of a guinea pig then. I kind of, you know, okay, that's nice that they did that. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, at the time you just want the cancer out, but then to sit there with the reality afterwards of realizing that actually the reason they're pushing for these sort of surgeries is because they know they are not going to be allowed because they're going to be constrained by budgets and targets. That's so wrong. third option seems to be where Skegness and Louth Hospital will just become one unit. It's a matter of either closing both and putting a new hospital built on PFI, halfway in between, or closing one or the other. Both have lost their A&E departments, they've been downgraded and we really do need them reinstated. Lincoln Hospital is now getting backed up with ambulances. So when you phone for an ambulance, you can't get one because it's stuck waiting at the A&E department, which is so, so very busy at Lincoln. It cannot cope with all the, you know, the infeed from the smaller hospitals that it's now having to. Most people hop across to another health trust and go to Grimsby, in fact, um, which is still a half an hour or more. have to put the NHS back into politics because right now it's not in politics as much as it's such a political issue it's private companies making the decision it's not the government anymore so they have to scrap the health and social care act straight away um, because the responsibility has to be a government responsibility to provide free health care to the country STPs chuck them in the bin and then 
We have to get rid of the private corporations. This is for you, Lot. This is for you. No, this oh, is, is it? Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, Aim for the patients. It's for your many coffee breaks that you get, oh, right? Come on in there. Both these two are running the department oh. today and oh, bless you. welcome to our A&E. card there for you all. Okay, thank I'm you. a nurse. Um, I was born at this hospital. <laughs> I did my training at Pilgrim wow. Hospital in Boston. Oh, right. And the closest hospital to be at the minute is Grantham. Um, we've just literally dropped the biscuits off. You know, in amongst all the politics and all the nonsense that's going yeah. on at the moment, I would just like to say thank you to all the A&E staff. Because obviously without you guys on frontline staff and with nurses and doctors and all of us, we would be struggling even more than we are already um, in this country. So it's a big thank you. Okay. If you ever get time to have a coffee break... <laughs> <laughs> actually, it's too bad a day. Oh, okay. um, so they're for you. OK. Not thank you. Very much. Much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. That's right. Lincoln is um, what they plan to be the super hub for the entire county, um, which at the moment doesn't actually cover trauma. Um, we currently have to go out of county to receive care for trauma such as road traffic accidents, um, head injuries. At the moment um, we still have services um, available in Boston for like stroke and uh, vascular and quite serious um, illnesses. Um, Grantham has restricted um, services so they don't send you there if you have um, anything too serious. An ambulance will just direct straight to Lincoln. Lincoln is the busiest A&E in the county because people get directed here from other places. So to come to an A&E and see big signs on the door saying this is really understaffed is quite scary. We will stay after work for an hour. We will work for a pittance. We will, because we do, because we care. Because what else can you do? We all walk out en masse and leave the patient to die. No, we don't. We stay there. And that is what they're relying on. But this is where we need to all start standing up and saying this is still not acceptable. Hundreds of thousands of doctors and nurses are out there and they want to speak up and they are starting to speak up. And I think the public outcry and the public uproar when they realise that the NHS is completely gone and decimated will actually cause the country a lot more problems than if they actually start listening now. And that's what they need to do. They need to start listening.